machine over here is lifting the piles, basically lifting the piles to pitch the piles. That's the terminology. They've got an interlock. And right, so that's that's the clutch. And that slides in. That's, that's called, called the clutch. clutch. And what he's doing now is he's just driving the pile down with a with a, a, a dolly on the top, a protection dolly, which sits over helmet, I suppose. It sits on the top and he basically hits it down so you don't actually buckle the top of the pile. If you just hit the part, top of the pile without the dolly there, you'd yeah. smash the top of the pile in and it would all be mangled. As it is, it comes out fairly good. It's maybe an odd buckle in it occasionally. Yeah. Um, now it doesn't look as though there's anything on the other side of that. No, so it's basically um, what we do is we're laying a sheet of polythene down the back. We've, what we did was we dug a trench through, a cut off trench see here where he's, he's interlocking just below his hand there that's the clutch yeah. one pile that. clutches into the other one like and goes down just slide right down. the way down yeah now rather than drive them in the ground what we have done is we've dug a trench along the bottom um, we've to to below the bottom of the piles right. we filled that with clay ah. and then we're driving into that clay which means the piles are sealed into the bottom of that trench. You can see where oh, he's see. he's just dug behind. I was going to say, I mean, there's not a huge amount of weight banging that down. No. Um, and I thought, well, what if it hits a rock or something? In this right. instance, we dug it all out, so we don't have, we know there aren't any rocks. Yep. This is our little fly jib that we constructed onto the end of the jib. We took a bucket attachment and made a little tiny fly jib for the excavator. So if you pick the pile and pitch it from high up. Now if you look at the geometry of that machine, him to try and lift his bucket up to that level with the pile is just too much. So we made, I call it a fly jib, because you put right. fly jibs on the end of cranes and do the same thing. So it's like a little fly jib. And you, you can see, puts, puts a pile in, drives the pile in very, very quickly. And they drove that whole row of piles from here right to the end in the day. Um, and this yeah. this attachment here, which is attached onto the uh, onto the Viedemann, is basically a post post hole driver from farms. You know, and, it, and all it does is is drives posts in the ground. Um, we've adapted it slightly to to go on. And you'll notice here there's a mechanism there, which is a quick release. And yeah, you'll we'll see it. The quick release is at the top, so that somebody doesn't have to climb up with a ladder to the top of the pile. Sort of working. The secret is to keep your fingers out yeah. and make sure that the line of the piles is absolutely right. So that's the quick release mechanism. You can see he, as soon as he's happy, he will lower that lever which releases a pin down here and the pin comes out and it's ready to go and put the next one on. And that normally is a chain hanging on it or a rope. Um, they've converted this one yeah. and this is the first time we've used this one. So the, the, the handle is there, it's quite safe in the locked position and when it's locked in they can unlock it very, very quickly. It means somebody's not tugging at a cable trying to get something it's, to it's work. It's very quick, the very oh, efficient very, very quick. work there. Yeah. And making sure everybody knows what he's doing. This is the, that's the attachment that was put on the front of the Wiedemann and he controls the, the dr driving mechanism from, from a, a, a lever on his, on his, on his joystick. And he basically goes in there and taps taps the pile in. And you all near yeah. need ear defenders when you're standing near that. That might not sound very loud, but when you're standing five, eight, ten, ten yeah, foot it's away from it, it's deafening. And you come away and yeah. you can't hear a thing. And one of the things we do do, as we did yesterday, is in fact do a toolbox call. That started the whole operation and took everybody through um, to make sure they all know what they're doing, who's doing what. Yeah. Please be aware that when machines are moving that you don't stand behind them, don't stand, sit, stand beside machines, you'll yeah. get crushed. Right. Um, yeah. You know, make sure if you are anywhere near uh, an excavator yeah. and you want to come within the range of an excavator, eyeball the driver and make sure that he, he gives you the thumbs up that you yeah. want to go somewhere and he knows you're going there. 
what you're seeing here is we're pitching the piles and normally you wouldn't pitch them and you would put the, the whalings on and put the tie rods through after. See this is him, him attaching attaching the, uh, the quick release onto the end of the pile so you can pitch the pile and lift the pile. Those two guys there look quite young. They're all Steve's Steve's team of wizards from uh, from from the mechanical shop. Um, they're all the mechanical team. Yeah. And what you do is you're making sure that the pile is absolutely plumb in that direction and plumb in the other direction. So you'll yeah. see the spirit level goes on to it. All yeah. of those guys there were our volunteers. If you actually look at the age he was, he had young Tom in there. But you can see he's, he's made the mechanism attach onto the quick release of the machine so he can go in there, he can pick that up and he can take it away, stand it against the wall, quick release off and go and put a bucket on or put a um, whatever, whatever is the next piece of machinery that he wants or forks. Mm. So they've got by the end of the day, they got up about up to those trees. Correct. So, how much further? Will you right go? at this point Would in it time. Need a lock on that. No, 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 no. We'll go straight into the cutting, deep into the cutting. We start going into cutting, and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, it's underneath under Claybit Lane. Lane. And then, when we've got under Claybit Lane, we go further round the corner, keep coming round, and we start coming down, and we're coming out of the cutting then. And there's a point where we come completely out of the cutting and actually go right. onto an embankment. How deep is that going to be? By the time About there? five, five metres deep, something of that order. It's quite a big deep cutting. And I use this as a gate to, to make sure that he keeps the piles absolutely going where he wants. And keep it straight. And by leaving the setting out the ranging rods here, which are the line we, we dress the line round to make sure. We're coming away from the straight now, coming round the curve. Um, so you can see this polythene sheet, we lay the polythene sheet down the back so it seals against the clay that's in the bottom and then we backfill against it. Yeah. That so means there's no other concrete or anything? No other concrete at all. Um, so the, pile, the anchor piles have already been installed back here and you'll see there where they've been dug out. The anchor piles at every rod. There's a short it, piece yeah. of pile, short oh, piece so of pile about 700 mil long. Yeah. And those are, so those are lifted in, there. they're driven in and they're driven in by this machine sitting on the top. So we, dig, we put those in as a row before we dig out. Once we've put those in, then we can dig out, and then the, we don't need the width to, to hold the machine up there. Yeah. It's a case of having to do it before you cut away. Then we cut out, dig the trench in the bottom, fill it up with clay, and then when we've got that all ready, then we want to get this in quickly, get the tie rods in, they put the tie rods and the whalers on the front, straighten the line up so it's all nice and, nice and tight um, to where we want it to be, and you can see going back there, not bad. It's not bad, not always spot on, but by the time you've got a bit of grass growing over the edge and a bit of water slapping around, nobody will actually see whether that was that straight or not. It, it will look absolutely perfect. Yeah. And he's measuring this wall he's doing over here off this now, so it's five metres apart. Just enough to get two boats to pass, but the reality is it's not really wide enough, not properly wide enough. You can see all that works is just a hydraulic ram in there which yeah. flicks a rod when he's working that from in there. And it's not that very heavy, simple, isn't it? but yeah. very, very simple. Heavy, no. Very, but very crude, really rod. works. And if you Rubbing. if you wanted to drive it almost fully into the ground, um, you could. You could drive it all the way down. You might find by the time you've driven it down, the top yeah. of the pile is looking a bit bent and man manky. Um, yeah. But you can see the fingers, and we you buy the, the dolly the helmet to sit on the top of the pile and uh, as Steve said I can make one of those he said but he said it'll last a day and it'll fall apart he yeah. said these things are it's a massive block of steel yeah um, so those tools rented or are they ours no they're ours we purchased those so the quick release we purchased and the helmet we purchased mm. 
So the main reason for using the piles is because there isn't room to do anything else really. Uh, we could have we could have put another wall on the other side, but this is this has speed on its side on its side, mm. um, and also suits the fact that we've got a, a, a slab going right the way across. The slab leans up against leads up against the base of the pile and holds the, the pile there and it means we've got a cut-off wall going below um, and if we've gone into the clay it means we, we water doesn't go through. We had a problem when we put the piling in down at um, Darnford Moors. Moors and what we had was was water came through the clutches and then basically went down the clutch as it will to just go down that tube that you formed and of course it was getting through so it was leaking like a sieve and they still were so we've had to run the line of sealant down the front face of those but also the problem is it's go once it gets into that clutch it goes down the clutch and the clutch is sort of loosely formed but forms a tube mm. all the way down of course the tube goes right down to the bottom mm. and if you it's don't actually top, drive it into yeah. clay it's not capped off from the bottom and you can see the tie rods come here to the anchor piles that we put in. We drove those in, they've got one hole at the top. He digs down there, finds where the anchor pile is, drops the rod through the, the anchor pile, slides it back, runs it through the front, tightens up the nut, puts the whaling beam on the front of that, which is the, 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 the beam at the top, which is the rubbing beam that the, uh, the boats will generally rub along and they also clip they clip all the anchors behind boats when they moor up. They drop these anchors into the in, into the into the back of the whaling beam between the whaling beam and the steel sheet pile. Yeah, right. And so what we then do is once we've got once we've got all that whaling in there, once we've got the tie rods in, pull it all into alignment, put the sheet down the back to make sure that we've got a, a waterproof layer, and then we fill down behind it, compact it, and then create, put the tow path on the top. These parts have all been paid for primarily by the that's tag what, scheme. That's the tag scheme has paid for them, yes. Um, so that's another big job, fixing all the tags on. That's the next one, actually <laughs> stamping them all out and doing it. Um, you can see the whaling beam goes in there and the nuts go on the outside and a big washer holds it on and then the, boat, the boats basically rub along here, so rather than rubbing on the pile. And this uh, this equipment was designed, and the Steve basically found found a found the hammer, and we put it on it. See, he's just checking the line to make sure he's happy. Um, it, a little bit of up and down. One of the problems is you drive a sheet pile in the ground, yeah. and you pitch the next one do it to it. Now, if if the clutch is a bit tight, it yeah. will drag the next one down Don't with it. Line. So, um, so that's well, why it, it goes a little bit. Along. Right along it, right. That's a very, very severe test. Really <laughs> um, and you can see we've got to come out through this fence because the, the I think there's about a three, two or three metre uh, encroachment. That wooden fence is not where it should be. It should be further back. And the thing is, do I really want to go, go and nail them and uh, try and try and get that land back right now? I've got more than enough other things trying to, trying to, mm. to, uh, to. To, to work on but this device here the way he's set this up is, is a fabulous fabulous device very simple simple but effective extremely effective yeah, um, yeah it's gone a long way in a short time it's gone it, I mean it's gone fantastically and he but you can see how everything literally bang it's, and it's yeah. and it's free and it's off whereas before before they f somebody thought up a quick release mechanism, um, there was a situation somebody would have to put a ladder against the pile, climb a ladder to undo the shackle or whatever it was on the top oh, of the yeah. pile, yeah. which means somebody's got a slippery ladder on the side of a steel sheet pile that, that he suddenly, this ladder goes off and he goes down. Mm. Um, whereas this, this way, literally, may find some of the early films he was driving the Viedemann as well he's 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 one of he, little Tom little tiny Tom mm. lovely little lad ever so keen ever so keen mm. and he, he's going to be he's going to be good he's going to be another Harry good
but you can see as we go into the into the hill, we'll have a, a, a cutting. We'll get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper as we go as we go up towards Claycott Lane. And by the time we get yeah, to Claycott so Lane, the water level is going to be something like five meters below. Right. That won't be piles then. Not we we're water. going to try and something. <laughs> well, the bottom, of course, as we dig down, we think there's going to be rock there. Oh, right. So we, we we're going to dig the sand off the top, and we may have to do something with the sand. Yeah. But it, we can't necessarily do these because we can't drive these into the ground. I've got some, some trees and shrubs to put round here, so that's the next next thing. Yeah. Um, so we've got, got a little bit more to do. So what I'm trying to do is stop people falling off the edge of here, so, so uh, we, yeah, we put the posts in here, but what we'll do is we'll put a bit of hedge through here so that stop people actually walking straight off the edge. And I'm going to put the other bollard on this side as well. So that's that's the next one of the next jobs I need to do. That's great. No, thank you for doing that, Peter. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. I hope that was. Um, no, that's good.